What's happening, Night Riders? So, plenty of you guys wanted me to check this out. This is Nazo Unleashed 10th Anniversary Special. Um, a while back, I did a reaction um, called Sonic Nazo Unleashed, which, which was awesome. Like, it really, really was an awesome, well-put-together, fan-made video. Um, and it was epic. Now, I, I understand that there's a sequel coming out to it and its original creator created this video entitled Nazo Unleashed 10th Anniversary Special. Um, so a lot of you guys wanted me to check this out and I know I've been putting it off but again I was still playing catch up but I'm here now so without any further ado let's jump straight into this. Let's go. But that's what he looks like. The 10th anniversary of Sonic Nazo Unleashed. Today, August 14th, marks the 10th year uh, ever since I submitted um, Sonic Nazo Unleashed Part 1 on Newgrounds.com. Oh, really? Uh, ever since then, between all the parts uh, uploaded to Newgrounds and the parts on YouTube, all the combination parts, over, it's like over 35 million views. And I thank Damn. all of you guys so much for supporting my little Sonic fan fiction over these past 10 years. That shit was awesome. I'm going to tell you about uh, <laughs> the backstory of how Nazo Leash came to be. And at okay. the end of it, I will show you a secret little um, power that Nazo gets and the route that Nazo. So, Interesting. For that. Ever since I was uh, little, I loved uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, Mario too, but after some reason, I always resonated with Sonic more. Uh, we, I grew up having a, a Genesis and playing that more than, uh, than the NES with my brother. Sonic 2 was Same. the very first Sonic game. Uh, then I went on to Sonic 3, so Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, fun fact, I never really found Sonic 1 to be that fun. Please don't hate me for that. I remember my <laughs> mom. It's all good. Would, I guess she figured out uh, some way to uh, enter in uh, a cheat code to, in Sonic 2 to enable debug mode. What? Um, that allowed me to transform into supersonic once I collected enough rings. And I heard about that. Craziest thing for me, like I could, Sonic was already fast, but you could go so fast in, at supersonic that the camera could even keep up with your speed, and that was awesome for me at the time. Yeah, that for real. Feeling would have yeah. a, a, a renaissance when I started getting into uh, Dragon Ball Z around sixth grade. Um, so I fell off of Sonic after Sonic. 3D Blast, but I never had a Sega Saturn, and oh, okay. I, I really didn't have a Dreamcast until I had a, until like the end of its life cycle, pretty much, so. Yeah, I never had a Dreamcast Sonic either. Two, uh, were lost on me, and so I got a GameCube. Me and my brother were playing a lot of old school games. We had bought Sonic and Knuckles, because I never actually owned Sonic and Knuckles. And okay. And we figured out you could connect Sonic 3 and uh, Sonic and Knuckles together, but that's when I found out about Hyper Sonic. Uh, and oh. that's a special uh, new form only available in um, you know, in that game. So a couple oh, I never knew that. Sonic's new forms and my you know growing interest in Dragon Ball Z. It's interesting. I started growing Sonic, you know, uh, fighting all the time, going supersonic, going hypersonic, fighting with Shadow. This is why I uh, wish I knew how to fucking draw. Oh my Sonic, god. You know, um, I wanted to make them um, do more than that. I'm I so mad I never knew how to. I never so, learned how to draw. Uh, I started going on newrounds.com around, I guess, at the age of uh, 11. I remember seeing a flash called Mario vs. Sonic by the late Randy Solo. And at the time, it was huge for me because he was taking the actual, like, sprites from the video games and making them fight each other. Um, and that was crazy to me. I'm like, you can, you can make your wildest, like, fantasy fights happen just with software. For real. And at the time, I didn't know how to use Flash or know how to acquire it so um, my mom had bought me my 11 year old self she bought me a uh, swish 2.0 and I made some really really uh, crude sprite animations with it the very first one I, I ever made was called Sonic vs Frieza um, again cool my Dragon Ball Z Sonic hype phase uh, obsession phase in uh, sixth grade and I had uh, Frieza shoot tails and Sonic go supersonic and you know fight him and all that <laughs> That's um, so cool. How to make a, you know, full Spray movie. animation is not easy. Film for new I mean, it takes a lot of work to do those too. And that's where I first used my idea of Shadow. 
me and my brother uh, ah. with like I guess this little free color of uh, sonic and shadow uh, and sprite form and I know like we probably weren't the first ones to come up with the idea of a fusion between sonic and shadow I'm pretty sure that's not the most original idea out there on the internet um, but I, mean, you were, I was probably like, the first one to uh, use it in, a, in an animated format maybe I don't know eventually okay. I would you know, make other sprite uh, movies throughout time and, and so I eventually saw a cartoon by Jeff Yandora called uh, Sonic X Chaotic Battle and mm. it was a hand drawn Sonic animation uh, with Sonic finding Shadow and it blew my mind and I, I remember watching it over and over again because uh, yeah Sonic and Shadow fighting with like you know uh, their super forms, their hyper forms. It went along to Guilty Gear music. It was awesome. And at that point, I was like, "Yo, I have to, I have to draw my next Sonic film. I can't just use sprites forever." And a friend of mine gave me. It's understandable. Back, and, uh, I got a uh, very small uh, Wacom Raphire drawing tablet, and I started working on my very first uh, Sonic film called uh, a Super Sonic Quest. And it okay. was around this time that I think Sonic X was coming out in Japan. And I remember seeing this... Uh, oh, yeah, I remember that TV show. This blue hedgehog. And the only thing people knew about him was that the file name of the image was Nazo.jpg. And Nazo in Japanese just means mystery. Uh, but the internet went wild with it at the time. Some people thought it was hypersonic. Some people thought it was a new character, a new villain, uh, or dark sonic. Um, of course, now we know that... It was just a scrapped supersonic design from Sonic X. Uh, oh, so okay. they decided to just stick with this old design. So Nazo, Nazo's design is supposed to be supersonic, but uh, I ran at the time I ran with it as a what if villain. So the thing was, I just jumped right sense. into animating. I, I didn't really know how to use Flash or the brush tool or the eraser tool. I just started drawing in it, and it was very crude at first because uh, whatever little animation knowledge I knew. Um, was very inefficient and very ugly looking <laughs> why I would eventually go back and redraw the scenes of Super Sonic Quest to make the first scene of the power of Nazo and that was the new name I was going by it was the power of Nazo oh. and this is where uh, uh, Hyper Shadow came back ever since, all, all, all the way back from Sonic Budokai uh, it looks very similar to my Nazo Unleashed Shadow just instead of being like a, like a Silver blue, he's more so like a pale yellow. Okay. Um, and Nazo's su super form, I think I just called it Super Nazo, is a minty green, wild, super sane, two hair, spiky chest, hedgehog. My 14 year old character design skills weren't up to snuff. I mean, look at his shoes. Eventually, after that, I was going to move on and do other Sonic shorts until I found uh, a archive of Sonic uh, voice clips from Sonic Heroes. And this is so interesting to learn the backstory about this. And I was like, yo, I can go back, splice in some of these voices, uh, and certain scenes of uh, the power of Nazo, and actually have the characters talk to each other. But I was just going to, you know, maybe re-upload it as a special edition uh, with different voices. Um, and when I started doing that, I noticed I had this small flat mouth, so I would just redraw the characters, and because I was getting better at drawing. And I started using the pencil tool instead to get a, a cleaner line. One new drawing okay. turned into another new drawing, and then I didn't like how this uh, this scene went, or how this fight scene went. So I decided, okay, let me just change the fight scene of uh, Sonic and Shadow uh, fighting Nazo. And as I it's continued to cool. I was like, well, at this point, I'm not going to just redo the entire film. Uh, and this is why, if you look at Nazo and we just the uh, lowest quality of uh, drawings is in the center, right before Shadow starts fighting Nazo. And that's because I started with the center of the film, then I went to the beginning of the film, oh. uh, worked my way down to Super Sonic's uh, battle with Nazo, which is why Super Sonic's battle looks better than Super Shadow's battle. And once that uh, part one and part two was, were done, uh, I decided to, to tackle uh, part three. Originally going to just use Espio's voice from Sonic Heroes, uh, for Nazo to have a voice because he had a very dark, rocky voice, but one, SBO didn't have that many lines, and two, I realized it would just be silly to have uh, SBO's voice uh, be Nazo. Chaos Emerald captured. And he invincible? That's when I discovered <laughs> Omada uh, through the series uh, Shin on Newgrounds. He had a very uh, intelligent, calculated way of talking. 
Um, and he reminded me of Perfect Cell, which is which, which, which oh, great yeah. because that's why Perfect Cell was fucking awesome. Gonzo's personality at the time off of Perfect Cell, and when he agreed to do lines for the film, I was like, great, I have all the voices that I need. When it came time to make part three, it was around this time that I was getting into animation more seriously. Uh, I was applying to colleges uh, for animation. You can see it in certain parts of uh, part three of Nas Unleashed, me trying to, uh, to use animation principles such as follow through, secondary action, overshooting, you know, trying to push my animation even further for mm -hmm. the uh, final part. The downside was I, uh, after the credits, I had placed an Easter egg of Eggman finding on Perfect Nozzle's golden cup. I had him do that in case later down the line mm. um, I wanted to make a sequel to Nozzle Unleash. Maybe when I was a better animator, when I had more time, because uh, I was planning to, plan to go to college and I was done with uh, you know, my Sonic fan film. But I owe both New Round, Sonic, and my Nozzle Unleash fans a lot because that's what got me into animation more seriously. If you're a new animator um, and you're trying to build an audience, YouTube's great if you have, you know, little tests you want to upload or if you have a, like I was lucky to have a following already, so I would be able to get YouTube views pretty quick. But if you're new, definitely upload your stuff to Newgrounds.com because it's, uh, it's curated content. Like people, like humans go in and they find uh, good stuff to put on the front page. Maybe, mm, you know, okay. a funny short. And you're now on the front page of Newgrounds. Maybe it was a really well animated short, and you're also on the top daily five of the day. It's a lot easier to get views uh, and criticism uh, and feedback uh, on Newgrounds than it's on YouTube, just because of the way they present their artists. And I also encourage everybody to uh, draw from life if possible. One of the advantages of me going into college was that I knew Flash, I knew software very easily because of you know, stuff I made for new rounds, but because I spent most of my time making either hedgehogs or uh, like anime OCs, uh, I wasn't really good at classical drawing. So oh, drawing okay. like realistic humans from a certain angle or drawing environments. Was drawing is not crazy. easy. And I was like, I, I, like, I don't care what anybody like says, drawing is not that easy. So below average in certain classes were, uh, or I had more to learn than others because of this drawback of mine. Especially in character design. So I encourage all of you who want to get into either storyboarding or illustration or animation seriously, uh, I encourage you to practice drawing things outside of your, I guess, what you're used to. Uh, draw good life, advice. Draw, uh, practice anatomy, draw environments, draw objects, draw animals. You know, you're eventually going to have to draw those um, subjects, uh, either in a school sense or in a professional sense. And if you find out that you can't draw that kind of stuff that well, um, that weakness is going to be your hindrance. Uh, probably I should probably take my own advice as well. <laughs> and, that's where, you know, and, and that's where you find me today. You know, uh, It's a long process you know, because my animation yeah, standards sure. and level of work uh, have increased tenfold since I was in high school. Uh, my free time has increased since high school, so the entire process is taking a lot longer than it did before. But I'm loving what, I'm, uh, what I've made so far. I love the feedback that I've gotten so far from you guys. I'm really excited to get uh, the film uh, complete as a whole. This uh, is I crazy. I am going to split it into three parts. That way uh, I can get uh, the film, uh, parts of the film to you sooner. And that way if something comes up between now and 2019, at least part one or part two can be done before that. So that way I can take my time with part three if need be and not be locked down to 2019. Again, Makes I sense. I a lot of you for being uh, patient with uh, the Wrath of Nazo. Again, this is going to take a, a long time to complete and I think splitting it in three parts will be the best uh, the best solution. I have some really awesome scenes uh, storyboarded uh, for Act 1. Um, I'm already in the, the middle of Act 2. This is uh, crazy. The voice lines I've received from my voice actors have been fantastic and I really cannot wait to get anything to you guys uh, soon. So thanks for being with me on this Sonic fan fiction craziness journey with me for the past 10 years. Oh uh, boy. Okay, that's enough out of you. Oh shit. I think it's time for the world to get a taste of the new me. And this, this is only the beginning.
What? Look how... What? Oh my god, when does this come out? Oh, did you see how crisp that was? That animation looks like the animation from the uh from Sonic X when that shit used to come on Fox. Like that shit looks beautiful. Oh my god. Oh my god. And the oh my god. I cannot wait for that shit to drop. I cannot wait. I don't know when it's gonna drop. I don't have the slightest clue. And the fact that he's... To be honest, I am a little glad that he's breaking it down into three parts or three different acts so that he could get certain things out to the fans sooner. Because if he was just to hold everything, we wouldn't get a thing until 2019. So I don't know if something is dropping this year, if it's going to drop next year. I really don't know, but I can't wait. I cannot wait. That shit is going to be so fucking awesome. Like, I love how it looked. And even the transformation, like, that shit was just so clean. Oh, my God. Like I was saying during the video, that is my one regret. My one regret is me never learning how to fucking draw. I always... Not that I always, but now that I'm older, I wish I knew how to draw. Because I would love to get into animation, but... Again... In order to like create your own stuff, you have to know how to draw. And then you gotta know how to animate it. So not only does drawing take a lot of time, depending on whatever it is that you're drawing, the animation takes a lot of time. And even like doing sprite animation, sprite animation isn't easy. That's that's time consuming as well. So every single animation that you've ever seen, whether it's on TV, whether it's a fan film, whether it's here on YouTube, that shit takes a long time, which is why I like it and why I admire the people that do animation because that shit is not easy and it's very time consuming. And sometimes it could even be tedious work, but the end results are fucking beautiful and I love it. So now writers, post your comments down below. Let me know what you thought about this 10th anniversary special for Nazo Unleashed. Let me know how excited you are for The Wrath of Nazo. Um, that's the sequel to Nazo Unleashed, for those of you that don't know that. I, I, can't, I can't wait. I, I, I'm very excited for this. Very excited for it. And I really like that he made this special and gave us an inside look on how Nazo Unleashed came to be. I really, really like that he did that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and until next time, y'all, we are on our way to 50K. Ride or die, not riders. We out.